It was a wrenchingly emotional tribute to a departed teammate, and adding to its aching poetry, it was spontaneous. 20 years ago this week, the Colorado Buffaloes lost their quarterback. The image of their saying goodbye is unforgettable. And at the time, that story had captivated the sports country. And as Tom Friend of ESPN.com now shows us, the second chapter of the story is playing out today with another quarterback hoping to carry on the legacy of his father. Every time I lace up the cleats, every time I put the jersey on, I think about him. I think about all the great things he did on the field, just trying to be like him. If T.C. McCartney ever gets in a college football game, he wants to be that quarterback from 20 years ago. <laughs> that quarterback is Sal Anessi, a prodigy out of San Diego, brought to Colorado in 1986 by a young, ambitious assistant coach, Les Miles. Les Miles personally recruited him, and he wore out his doorstep. Getting Anessi was a recruiting bonanza. You think we weren't slapping high fives? By 1988, the offense had been turned over to Anessi, a junior. Here's Sal Anessi, looking down the middle, Campbell! And that's a great pass by Anessi. It was a breakthrough season for him and a program that won eight games for the first time in 12 years. Sal was a guy that took us from a team to a family. He was the guy that got us to the next level. And that, I think, was the difference between us being good and us being great. Teammates and fans adored him, including head coach Bill McCartney's daughter, Christy. She and Nessie had lived down the hall from each other two years before as freshmen. He made her laugh. They connected. And midway through the 1988 season, 20-year-old Christy had something to tell her parents. I came home and just blurted it out, I'm pregnant. And, you know, my dad was up pacing and um, wanted to know, you know, who's the father, because he didn't really know I was dating Sal. Tried to keep that a secret. And then she said, Dad, the father of the baby is the quarterback of your team, Sal and Nessie. I was flabbergasted. I mean, I did not see that coming. And so I said, well, you know, it doesn't matter who it is. We're with you. I called Sal in right away, and I said, look, this is not going to affect your position on the team. But I need to know whether you're going to be with her through this or whether you're not. And he looked me right in the eye and he said, Coach, I'm not going to marry her. And my heart, that hurt my heart. Rumors of the pregnancy leaked out, although the coach, his daughter, and the quarterback never spoke of it publicly. Anessi and Christie stopped seeing each other. But following the 88 season, all of that was obscured by a troubling change in Anessi's health. We were winter conditioning, and Sal was, kept pulling himself out, and he was walking over to the trash can and kept throwing up, and you know, he was throwing up blood. In March of 1989, there was a diagnosis, inoperable stomach cancer. Anessi was given six months to live. I think I was eight months pregnant when we found out how sick he was. I um, went by myself and just started crying because, I mean, to hear that someone that you care so much about, the father of your child, is um, has cancer and might die is just um, overwhelming. By the time Colorado reconvened for spring practice in 1989, Anessi seemed to be responding to chemotherapy. I'd like to pass this to the opponent, my teammates here. God bless you. See you next year. And on April 24th, that same spring, Christy gave birth to a son, Timothy Chase McCartney, a son of Nessie nicknamed TC. We have a picture of him right after TC was born and he was holding him and he has a big smile on his face and that's kind of how I always remember him as a dad. But by the time the 89 season arrived, the cancer had ravaged Anessi's body. He lost 50 pounds, lost his hair, and would come to practices and home games on oxygen. And when Jeff Campbell caught a long pass against Illinois on September 16th, the receiver pointed straight to Anessi. I know it took every single bit of effort for him to get there. Oh, 
want them to know that he was right there. That's for you, man. That's for you, and that's going to be the standard. That next week, his grieving sporadic, Christy and the Inessi family stood vigil at the hospital. I was in there, and everyone started leaving, and so I started to leave, and they're like, no, wait, Sal wants to talk to you. So we did have one moment, just the two of us, and he said that he was sorry for the way he'd handled things and that how he was so proud of TC and how he can't wait till we can take him to the park. That was really a special moment to me. I will never forget the last time when uh, I think Sal knew. He grabbed his son by the hand and looked at him so like deeply. He was just letting his son know, you know, how much that he loved him and no matter what happens to him, he won't be around, but may he always know that he loves him. Anessi passed away on a Saturday, September 23rd. And at the memorial service, for the first time in public, Bill McCartney acknowledged that five-month-old TC belonged to the quarterback. With Anessi gone, he vowed to help Christy raise her son. But it was clear the next Saturday in a game at the University of Washington that Sal and Nessie was still in their lives. We've lost Sal the week before. And the next thing you know, they're all on one knee pointing to the sky. We will observe a moment of silence in honor of Sal and Nessie here at Husky Stadium. The Buffaloes are pointing to the sky. That wasn't something that we had planned. It wasn't something we had talked about doing. It was something that just happened. There were guys that were, were in tears. I know a lot of us had said, we're gonna go do this thing for you, Sal. We are gonna get to the national championship and we are gonna win it. Colorado finished the regular season as the only unbeaten team in the country. It's very emotional simply because of the fact that our friend Stalin Nessie wanted to live for this. It wasn't God's blessing for him to live to see this, but I know he was there with us. A Nessie's dying wish was to win the Orange Bowl. And with the national title on the line in Miami, the Buffaloes lost to Notre Dame. But when they won a share of the national championship the following year, a specially made number eight Anessi jersey went up on TC's bedroom wall. I think it made him feel closer to his dad. I think that's why he always grew up wanting to be a quarterback. He wanted to be like his dad. He wore number eight as soon as he could. His grandfather, who lived next door, taught him to play quarterback like his dad. And by high school, TC was bigger than his father at six foot three, owner of a stronger arm. And then he got a phone call from that same ambitious football coach, Les Miles now the head man at LSU. I think the, the tie is a wonderful one for him and in some ways makes him closer to his dad. I think he loves the game that his father loved. The chance to play in a big time program for people who knew where I came from and who knew my dad and my grandfather, that was important to me. TC walked on to the LSU football team in 2007 and although he wears number 17 and has yet to play a down, Every game day, his mind is on number eight. This season, LSU's first game was at Washington, the same stadium where in 1989, the Colorado Buffaloes honored Sal Anessi. It gives me goosebumps when I, when I watch them all point and honoring my dad that way. That's my dad. It's a special feeling. I think a, a lot of what keeps me going is continuing his legacy. He didn't get to see it through, so maybe I'll be able to get on the field and see it through one day. But he'll be there. He always is. Tom Friend reporting. T.C. McCartney is third on the LSU depth chart at quarterback and still his mother, Christy, traveled to Seattle to watch that game against Washington. 
TC hopes one day to coach just like his grandfather, Bill McCartney, and he's also hoping next year to reclaim his father's number eight when running back Trendon Holiday completes his eligibility at LSU. For more on the story of Salonesi and his son TC McCartney, read Tom Friend's companion piece online at ESPN.com.